So today, we are challenging Ben to a mystery box chef versus chef challenge with our head of food, Kush. We've given them a mystery box of ingredients plus a very special ingredient that they're having to share now, and that's what they're working out. And we've given them 45 minutes to cook up an amazing plate of food to be judged by Baz, who will have no idea who cooked which. You've asked for this for ages. We've wanted to do this for ages. It's already good. <laughs> Boys, your cooking time starts in three, two, one. one. Elvis has entered the building. <laughs> Do you like it? I do yeah. like it. I'm going cash today. Kush, how you feeling? Nervous. Nervous? For good reason. Why? Well, if there's one person that knows how to satisfy Barry Taylor, it's Ben Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you asked for him to be in here. How you feeling, Evers? I mean, double box, you do treat us. Would you like to open the first box? Beets, the candy variety and yellow. We've got some, uh, I'm assuming winter tomatoes, because everything's seasonal at sorted food. Correct. Oh, and he's even on brand. A squash of sorts. Some artichokes from uh, Italy. Right, that's got a label on it. That's got a label on it. Well done, guys. <laughs> well done. These things. I love eating them. I hate preparing them. So thank you very much. <laughs> now, would you like to move on to your special ingredient? Oh, glorious. Uh, I'm not going to bother taking that out. Got big teeth. It is. I would presume a big monkfish. Correct. On ice. How do you feel about that? Well, it's Barry, so he likes pretentious and fancy monkfish. You bought two monkfish on. No? Okay. No, fine. Easy. A little bit of fish prep, a little bit fiddly to get the skin off, to get that initial membrane off. It is a nice, chunky, robust meat um, that cooks well. So straight off, not a lot of ingredients but with spices and herbs and other bits to go with it, quite fun. Right, let's get you set up. Look at that. Oh! So the first step here is for you guys to decide who's using which bits of the monkfish, because we've only got one. Mm, makes sense. The good thing is, we're only doing one plate of food. The question is, which end do you want to go? Uh, well, you like the head. Given the other ingredients we've got, I yeah. think I'm thinking tail, but... I'd like a bit of tail as well. There you go, let's do the tail and let's go half each. Left and right. Left and right, Left okay, and fine. Right. Yeah, fine. Can I have the bone? Yeah. I've noticed another thing we have to share. The pumpkin. Yeah, there's only one of those. It's only one of those? Yeah. Which half do you want? That half or that half? <laughs> Boys, your cooking time starts in three, two, one. Chef! He's palmed off the fish on... No! Kush! Mine! Mine! <laughs> Left or right, top or bottom? Lovely, thank Done. you. We're both starting with the same ingredient. Ben's prepping it in a very peculiar way. So this is going to take longer to cook, as are probably the globe artichokes to prep and cook. We will come back to the fish, but we've kind of decided tail end each. I'm just getting it as small as possible, so it cooks as quickly as possible. So I've got some extra virgin olive oil, uh, chopped up delica, delicia pumpkin, uh, butter, salt, pepper, and I'm putting some cumin in there because like roasted pumpkin and cumin goes together. Monkfish is a very meaty, powerful fish uh, in both texture and the flavour is quite, you know, punchy. Uh, so it'll, you know, contrast and balance that out quite nicely. You're cooking using extra virgin olive oil? Yes, because it's not getting to the point where the extra olive oil will burn. But all of that, all the butter, all the oil is going to go into the dish, so it needs to be good to start with. Ebers, what are you doing? Why? I'm roasting it off because what I want to do is kind of draw out some of the moisture in the oven and as it roasts, you'll get that, just salt, pepper, bay leaf and some rosemary. Watch out, Kush, he's using a bay leaf. Yeah, that's oh. it, you're, you're screwed You're now. in big trouble yeah. if you don't reciprocate. Use two bay leaves. Yeah. Barry likes pretentious, Barry likes pasta, I know that for a fact, and I'm playing to my skills and I make relatively decent pasta, I think. So having known each other for 17 years, one of the things I'm really interested to know is, have you ever done anything like this before where you've cooked up against each other? Uh, we've cooked up against each other in really small kitchens like this. Right, okay. physically. Against yeah. each other. Physically up against each other, but that's a different story <laughs> altogether. Ebers, what is it about the artichoke that is particularly tricky? 
It's just a bit fiddly to prep. Um, it's not difficult, it's just a bit fiddly. There are things to watch for. It oxidizes very quickly. So as you're prepping it, rubbing it with lemon is wise. These are globe artichokes. They're part of the thistle family. It is a, it is a flower. Different to Jerusalem artichokes, which are more underground, the root, the tuber, nutty, delicious. And I have grown and therefore cooked with a lot. These I tend not to. What flavours are we getting from the artichoke here? When it's cooked, maybe a cross between like asparagus, celery and Jerusalem artichoke. Nutty, earthy, but kind of more subtle. I got a base of uh, leek, shallot, garlic. Didn't peel the shallot because it's all getting strained off. Once Ben has done his beauty and given me my bone uh, from the monkfish, I'll put that in there. It must be a chef uh, thing. Put some tomato yeah. in it. Tomato paste, white wine, and that'll be my sauce. I'm going to make some little uh, caramelised roasted uh, pumpkin tortellini, a bit of pan fried monkfish with a chorizo y sauce because it's flavour. The little spice and the fat from here will go well with the nuance of spice throughout the rest of the dish. Uh, all the fresh herbs going in, spices, layering. Handmade pasta as well. Yeah. <laughs> Ebers, what's the plan for your dish, mate? Yep. See, you presume I have a plan. <laughs> what I'm doing is taking the ingredients and, in my opinion, celebrating the best we can. So the artichokes, I'm going to start by boiling. Then we will cut them in half, take out the actual choke. And then what's left, I'll probably saute in really, really hot stuff with making kind of stuff. <laughs> once, <laughs> once the squash is roasted off, which I think allows moisture to escape, it intensifies the sweet, nutty flavour of the squash, then I will puree it with a few spices, a little bit of chilli and a little bit of fennel. All on the same plate or is it sort of...? No, 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 all on one plate. I've just prepped two artichokes because that's all I need uh, by just, you know, cutting Oh, Chef, you could have had two of mine. I just... <laughs> uh, I'm going to get onto a pan, uh, cooking out with some herbs, some white wine that I've just realised I've put all in there. So, some vinegar. Uh, let's go apple. Uh, a bit more white wine, maybe. Uh, and then just braise them and then put them simply on the plate, just dressed with some herbs and some olive oil. So that's all you have to do. Did you say you used all the white wine? Yeah. You. My sauce is going to be delicious. <laughs> Why? Oh. See if there's any. Oh, that'll do, Chef. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Just, just, just. No, no, that's my bowl. Oh, yeah. That's my bowl. <laughs> so we've got white wine, thyme, rosemary, tarragon, a bit of vinegar, just salt. I'm going to put a bit of garlic in because it's my friend. And some bay leaves because. Oh, there we go. Yes. Back on a level playing I think field. Six will be enough. Wow! Oh. That is six. You are going to blow Barry's mind. It might do something. Boys, you have 30 minutes left. You've had a third of your time. Kush, when are you going to do the monkfish? Uh... <laughs> if you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do to make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. What do you want? <laughs> all the spices that are back oh, on the front here now. All right. This uh, is frantic. Uh, Where's the one I want? A little bit of chilli and a little bit of fennel. Chilli and fennel. Monkfish is a really robust, meaty fish and can handle bold flavours, including heavy spice, but also pairs really nicely with meat. So I am doing a baconaise. <laughs> what? It's basically like a bernaise, but with bacon. Or in this case, pancetta. That sounds fantastic. Baconaise. OK, so you, you've halved your fish. Got halved the fish. Now the really tricky thing. So the skin's come off. If you've got... Uh, that's one way of doing it. I was going to say the other option is blue towel, so you've got something to grip, or clean tea towel. You need to have a good, firm grip of it. Oh, oh, hey! That straight in my sauce base. Oh, nice oh. bit of flavour. Wow. I haven't done this at Pace in a while. Not that you ever try and prep fish at Pace, because it's expensive, so... Don't waste anything. Loads of flavour, loads of marrow down the middle of the bone. That goes in. That's essentially making a fish stock. 
These are very simple. I've taken the black tomatoes and I've just cut them into strips and I am brining them. So it was boiling water, salt, sugar, rosemary. And that will really brine and add kind of a seasoned flavour throughout, but without taking away their wonderful freshness. We're not cooking them, just kind of blanching them. I'm making a herb and saffron salt to cure my monkfish with quickly. Curing draws out the moisture, which gets you a firmer flesh, and it should impart some flavour. So this is rosemary thyme, bay leaf, obviously. Tiny bit of cumin in there, and some garlic, salt and pepper. So basically you're getting all those flavours that you want in your dish and the fish, but all done. There, that'll sit there, and hopefully, when I cook it later, it'll be nice. <laughs> Great! That is the I'll confidence that we need. You should write menus. <laughs> yeah. So I'll use this for something else later. It keeps in the fridge or on the counter in an airtight container for months. What else could you use it for? Oh, uh, this over some beetroot would be lovely. That over fish, over chicken, over beetroot. What you you finished talking, I need that. It's got salt in it. <laughs> A bit of a messy pup, isn't he? <laughs> How do you put up with it? I'm about to puree the roasted pumpkin to get it nice and smoothish that I can then fill my pasta with it. <laughs> yeah, I've made enough for one. I was just thinking that I've got enough, I've not really got enough for my puree either. I'm bulking mine out with leek, also seasonal, and a little bit of dairy. I'm ad-libbing and mixing a bit of cream cheese into my uh, pumpkin puree. It'll do two things, it'll bulk it out and it'll cool it down a bit. Pine a bit of fresh tarragon. Twelve minutes and 23 seconds left. Oh, gosh! I wasn't expecting that! No, Kush! <laughs> so what, I've got enough. We would absolutely recommend Sorted Sidekick and we're going to let our kitchen speak for itself. We have gadgets that the team have recommended. We have gin, we have cookbooks. We have a cupboard full of store cupboard staples. We have a fridge of veg that's actually going to get used. And we even have tea towels. Where's the dish? What the f is going on? Why are my ingredients floating around the kitchen? What do you do with my bernays? Uh, it's in the um, microwave. <laughs> <laughs> it was sat on top of a pan of steaming water, so we didn't do that. I've got a pan of steaming water here. <sighs> Game over. Gone. Have I split it? Yes. I didn't know no, it was you sabotaged it him. So now he's got to save Ebba's dish that you ruined. Okay. I'd also just spent the last 10 minutes sweating making that, and now you're gonna make me make it again. Sorry. I put it in the microwave because it's insulated, so it would hold the temperature, and I needed his water for my pasta. Little did I know that it wasn't fully cooked and would split. Are you okay, Ebba's? Uh, I've gone a bit quiet because there's now a few things I need to juggle and do. And they all come together, it's just, it needs a little bit of heat, I'm getting my monkfish in. Boys, you're into your last ten minutes. This is now all about maintaining wrist action. Turn the fish. So. I'm going to cheat and fry my chorizo off, and then I might cook the fish in the chorizo fat. Ebbers, have you saved your sauce? Uh, I had to start again, but yes, we have a sauce. Wow, well oh. done, mate. Last five minutes. My bacon aid is now being finished off with some of the pancetta and tarragon. You can toast nuts in the microwave, can't you? Yep. Artichoke's going into butter. So you've got a really salty thing and you're going to put olives and capers. Yep. Yeah, because I'm not thinking now. I'm panicking because of the time crunch. I'm making a little mixture of capers, olives, pine nuts. I want some texture and crunch. You've got some acidity in there. Uh, I've got lemon juice in there, but I might finish it with some sherry vinegar as well. 
pasta's going in, put a bit of oil in the water, just so that when I take it out, it'll naturally be coated in a bit of olive oil and give it a shine. So I'm making a sauce vierge now, which is uh, tomatoes, olives, capers, garlic. Don't you? Oh, that's gone overcooked. I need one big white plate. One big white plate? This is amazing! <laughs> uh, what about do that? Pl present it as two plates? What a great idea. Yeah, yeah done. Doing it. Uh, leave it, leave it, Jay. Yeah? Yeah, freestyle. Free what do you mean freestyle? One and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. Let's check the fish. Yeah. After you, chef. I'm just going to slice mine and put it on top. Beautiful. Oh, that hand hot. Hot yeah. handles all round. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Mine is still undercooked. Mine too, but it'll be there. It will be there. 60 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Eek. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, step away. Step away from your dishes. Boys, how was that for you? Brilliant. Kush, we did say one plate. Barry, welcome to the kitchen. Oh, it's been so fun. What's happened? Everything. <laughs> in front of you, you have two dishes cooked yeah. up by chefs in 45 minutes using a mystery box full of seasonal ingredients. Would you like to take a look under cloche A? I can't wait for this. Barry, here you have seared monkfish with fennel spiced squash puree, sauteed artichokes, brined tomatoes, and bacon A's. Wow, okay, spectacular. Now left cloche B. <laughs> oh, does this, does this represent something? Well, it does when you take either end of the plate, please, with both your hands, and slightly pull. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> please tell me that wasn't on purpose. It was not on purpose. <laughs> okay, it's good. <laughs> what you have here is roast pumpkin tortellini, saffron roast monkfish, chorizo, Baby artichoke barrigoule with sauce fierge. What fills me with so much confidence and hope and optimism and know that everything's right in the world is that I can tell that both chefs had no idea what they were making. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to say, I mean, this was a tough challenge. It was hard. So, I mean, I am really intrigued to see what these taste like. Mm. <laughs> oh, the bacon A's hit. Mm. For such a random selection of ingredients, it does go beautifully together. Incredibly meaty as a fish, therefore kind of can carry a lot of flavour with it as well. Those zingy tomatoes, I've never had tomatoes like that. And that bacon A's seems unnecessary, but it's absolutely delicious. Like, the plate was already complete without it, but I'm not complaining. Which half would you rather me go for? Mmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is not good for me. That is wonderful. <laughs> I don't think pumpkin had that much flavour. That is a outrageously creamy, garlicky, very well filled tortellini, which is important. Monkfish again. The boys had to share a monkfish and figure out how to do that themselves. They both have obviously the same texture and same body, but because one was cooked in bacon and surrounded by these ingredients, it's a lot more earthy. Whereas this plate, plate B, feels fresher, more zingy. Who do you think cooked which? Ben looks the most stressed right now, so I'm going to say that he smashed the plate. So <laughs> I reckon that's ever, so that's Kush. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who of the chefs is going to take the victory today? I think they, they're both stunning. And from what I can tell, it doesn't look like there have been any mistakes, apart from that one. <laughs> I think it's going to be A. The winning chef, please step forward. That was my bacon A's. <laughs> it, it, 
if I'm honest, it's just the most naughty. And that's kind of <laughs> what I'm into right now. Right, let's get in there. I want to try some of this. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, wow, that is stunning. Mm. That puree. The tortellini oh. is a standout thing there. Give me some of this. I love the plating. And the crunch of the beetroot. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what Barry thought, but you've watched the whole thing. So comment down below, let us know how do you think our chefs got on. And if you would like to see another one of these, click like all together in your masses in three, two, one, go. Oh, is that a thing? No, I'm, I'm making it a thing. <laughs>